Hello everybody and welcome to this video. It's the final video in the series on what the 2017 AQA GCSE English Literature exams teach us about the 2018 onwards exams. Today we're looking at paper two, section C, the unseen poetry sections of the exams. Now I've got um, three videos on how to analyze unseen poetry. You can see those in my English literature playlist. So this video isn't about how to answer the question. It's about the things that arose from the examiner's report, from our experience as examiners, from past papers we called back, etc., etc. Uh, in the 2017 exam. Now the first thing to talk about is timing and this again is no surprise I talked about it in my videos before the exam. This question or there are two questions in paper 2 section C as you know and there's 27.1 uh, and 27.2. Now 27.1 the analysis of the first unseen poem is worth a lot more marks than 27.2 which is the eight mark very quick sort of 10 minute question comparing two unseen poems and the first thing to talk about is that a number of students spent longer on the comparison of the two unseen poems and wrote more on that than they did on the first question the analysis of the one unseen poem now this can seem quite natural I suppose analyzing one poem um, you would think you know well I'm not going to have as much to say as when I compare two poems but the importance as always is basing the timing that you spend on the marks available. So 27.2, the final question is only worth eight marks. You should spend about 10 minutes on it. And a number of students actually spent more time on the final question than the first question on unseen poetry. So it's the same through English language and English literature. You've got to manage your timing well. The second thing is just a very small point, but all the time in English literature, you have to disassociate yourself from the text as if it's a real story or uh, a, you know a kind of um, get carried away writing about the plot or the subject itself and you need to write about the writer and realize that the text is a conscious construct now what the examiner's report pointed out is that you might want to use the poet's name to help you to refer to the text as a, a conscious construct uh, keep reminding you that the poet deliberately put the text together so rather than write about sort of what's going on within the text as if it's a true story write about the fact that the, the, the poet created the poem um, and, and you know their use of language and structure and form was used to you know create this meaning and just through using the poet's name and in the other English literature exams using the author's name will help you remember that this is not um, you know just the plot you're writing about but how the poet themselves has used language structure and form to create meaning one of the things I thought was really interesting in the examiner's report was this idea that with the unseen poem you might want to choose three or four key things to focus your attention on, your analysis on. And the examiner's report says, you know, well, read the unseen poem. And I talk about that in my revision guide and my video series, you know, just read the poem to get a sort of idea, a basic sense of what it's about, and then pick three or four things to write about. I just thought that was very interesting that the examiner's report might be so specific. Um, to give that kind of advice. So nothing massively surprising. I think the timing issue is just one of those things where you've got to remember, look, it's not how much can I write in this answer, it's how many marks are available and therefore how long should I spend. And it's about you know one minute per mark available roughly. Um, use the writer's name, a poet's name in this case, helping you to think about the text as a conscious construct and read the unseen poem first and then pick three or four things that you're going to write about. The unseen poems will contain more than three or four things that you could write about but it's a good thing to actually think, you know, what what will I choose to write about? It's not write everything you can find, every idea you have. It's have a think, you know, which three or four ideas are going to allow me to demonstrate my skills the best. Now, you will see unseen poems and sample answers in my English literature guide available for £6.99 in paperback on Amazon or £3.99 ebook at mrbruff.com. Please do pick up a copy and subscribe to the channel. And next week, we're starting a new series 
and I think you're going to really enjoy it, so make sure you're here next Saturday.